What is good Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to be breaking down something else that I stated yesterday because I am seeing some very very bullish signs for Tesla for the upcoming week but I also want to talk about what some institutions are doing, what they're preparing for and why on earth there are other big moves coming for the future as well as we could see some swings to both directions, not just the upside but also the downside within the next couple of weeks. I'm going to show you why I think that what institutions are preparing for why on earth some big dates are coming for july and how this may affect tesla going forward now before i break any of this down before i get into any more details i do have to mention a couple of things real quick firstly i'm not a financial planner none of this is financial advice and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this not only benefits me it benefits the entire tesla community as a whole and the last things if you guys can please check out the weeble link down below and in the description if you sign up for weeble the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account you're guaranteed six free stocks each worth up to two thousand dollars which you could always sell for cash and you could use that cash to buy some tesla shares for free in this limited time offer that ends in just five days so please check it out before they run out but that's out of the way let's get on with the video so looking at tesla i did mention uh, in my yesterday video i'm just going to briefly go over some of the things i said obviously we have that 740 resistance we want to break above that if we break above that it's going to be a very very good sign we want to hold above 740 and the next key zone and what i mentioned uh, before I talk about the next key zone is the indications suggesting that we have more bullish momentum because if you look at the RSI right I mentioned that look the RSI is one of the few indicators out there that are that's not looking that great uh, we, we are seeing some kind of divergence right here and this is looking a little bit bearish but besides that right that is one thing to account for most other indicators the majority of them still look very very bullish from the way the MACD is kind of performing to seeing this kind of clumped uh this clumping of these basis bands and also the macd continuing so i mentioned this previously right in my yesterday video but we're still looking pretty bullish and if you consider the fact that the spy and the nasdaq they still have these gaps to be filled as we're seeing volume improve and push them up i think upside does seem more probable for next week now the thing about this though is i have to remind you that upside is awesome makes us excited right retail gets very excited but you have to be prepared for that rejection which is very likely to come and i say this because there are institutions preparing for potential downside in the month of july is it guaranteed nothing in the market's guaranteed right but it is very probable so let me actually bring up the two hour candles tesla's key zone would be a 4.7 to 5 percent move to the upside that's that 772 level 772 dollars i think that's where tesla is destined to end up going to if we break past 740 and then 750 where it's very likely we fill the gap here and right after we fill that gap it's very probable we're going to find our top and then get a bit of a rejection in that range and we may start to see some bearish price action after so how high are we going to go i don't know exactly 772 to 775 seems likely but maybe a little bit higher than that before another potential rejection and the reason i'm talking about a potential rejection later on especially during the month of july is because so much is going down in that month not only does tesla have their earnings this is something i want to warn you guys about well before it actually happens now there are lots of fud articles out there i mean just look at this this not article this ad right here i mean all these things are kind of going on for the month of july and the thing about july is tesla has their earnings okay july 25th 2022 and i want to be honest with you it's likely that they're going to miss on earnings because it's for q2 and we know during q2 for over a month they had those lockdowns in china that really slowed down their production so their earnings per share you know their revenue it may actually fall a little bit below some expectations now is that bad does that mean tesla's a bad company no it's not their fault that there were these lockdowns so as a result of that right shorts the media they're going to take advantage of the news the fud and even though it's illogical the market might still see the opportunity to bring tesla down even harder so it is something i want to warn you guys about because when we go and look at the fed meeting it happens to be very close as well 
let me see on july 26th through the 27th we have the fomc meeting once again we don't truly know exactly what's going to happen it depends on cpi and these other metrics that are coming out but that is also going to be altered the new policy changes from the fed will be kind of altered and this is kind of like what jerome powell's strategy is use data to make his changes they're going to be altered depending on the cpi report consumer price index report is coming out on july 13th 2022 at 8 30 a.m for the month of june so we want to see cpi decrease right it's going to be very important now because there's so many capricious things coming out for the month of july if you look at the options chain of the spy specifically when you look at the put to call ratio there's some months where we actually see more puts than calls and a lot of preparation for potential downside so what i find interesting is if we go down max pain for the spy right now is now at like 390 which means that as of right now it seems like institutions are prepared for the spy to kind of push up again maybe drop a little bit later and they are prepared for some potential upside but if you go a little further down, you're going to notice by the time we get closer to the FOMC meeting, after the uh, CPI report comes out, we get a higher put to call ratio. We saw a lot of institutions load up on a lot of these puts. If you look at this right here, there are currently 1.6 million puts out of the money for July 15th, 2022 for the SPY. And we're seeing a lot I mean, 800,000 out of the money for the call side. So there are, are almost twice the amounts of puts and institutions are kind of preparing. Another example would be like around September and uh, parts of August too. We're seeing similar things like that. But I want to let you know that we're going to see a lot of shifts in the options chain. And a lot of uh, institutions are specifically targeting the month of September, I think around here. And they've been buying millions if not billions of dollars worth of puts to prepare for potential downside for the month of September. So a lot of institutions out there, they're still ready for more downside. And I do think that for July specifically, if the G GDP report comes out as negative, which is very possible and other factors, there could be more downside, especially with earnings coming out for Tesla and a lot of these tech stocks, it could be a crazy, crazy month. So does that mean it's the end of the world? No. And when I talk about this, I'm not just trying to tell you that Tesla is going to recover eventually. It's also because in August, we might see some good things coming out from Tesla. Finally, some really good things that can move the share price. That is the fact that we have the potential three-way stock split coming out, making shares more affordable. And the last time they did this was August 2020. And if we go down right here, the request is included in a list of provisions Tesla is planning to bring up at its august 4th 2022 shareholder meeting which it filed on friday a couple of weeks ago with the sec and that in turn is kind of like a reset of its stock price which has gone up very dramatically over the last couple of years so it goes to show these stock splits tend to be quite successful there's going to be a lot of hype and i think that the options chain for tesla is going to go crazy as we get closer to the specific date do i know the exact date it's going to come not necessarily but i do think there are going to be a lot of big announcements and particularly around august i think things should improve big time so i, I want to make this very kind of like general and clear for you if we look at the options chain for tesla Obviously, we see a big drop where Max Payne is for the month of July. That's kind of like how the overall market is right now. But for August, the month of August and these later months, we are seeing some improvements here and there. Institutions don't seem to be loading up in as many puts, at least for the time being. So my overall thesis is this. I think upside is more probable for next week as we approach July. For parts of July, though, I think downside is going to be more probable. So just to kind of draw this out, now this is not a guarantee. Don't take it that way. This is just a hypothetical example. Next week specifically, it's possible, trying to make this as narrow as possible, Tesla actually pushes up next week and we go as high as that 775, maybe 780 level, somewhere around there. Like I said before, that the... um uh 4.7 to about five percent move maybe a little higher than that then we might see a rejection of that i don't know where the peak will be maybe 780 maybe 790 i don't truly know but it's very probable based off historical data that it's likely going to be in this range right here below 800 a little bit below it 
somewhere close to that. And if that is the case, July may be kind of bearish. We might see a big drop in July. How low will we go? I don't truly know. It depends on data, depends on if a recession is announced and all those things, but it could be, you know, it could cause a lot of really bearish price action, or it won't be that bad if the recession is announced. But I just think that it's more probable we end up filling this gap down here and that 650 range sometime in July. Am I promising it? No, but I do think it's more likely considering all the catalysts that may drive the market down and how institutions are preparing. But as we approach August, right, who knows how low Tesla will go to? Will it stop at 626? Will it stop at 650? I don't truly know. Depends on the news, depends on how sellers react, depends on if we truly see the big announcements and news and headlines going crazy over a recession that plays a role too. But let's just say we do end up dropping like this. Let's just say Tesla does end up dropping even lower. Even if that's the case, I expect a bit of a bounce coming again, especially in the month of August when they have the shareholder meeting and then Tesla may announce their stock split, right? And then we might see it start to kind of rally right back up to the upside, kind of like this, temporarily. And obviously you have to account for the stock split if you want to continue, because institutions are not as concerned for the month of August as they are for the month of July. But in August, I just want to put it out there. You have to account for the stock split. Don't look at the specific numbers. But I do think that the sentiment looks a little bit better for August for August, excuse me, than it does for the month of July. So that's essentially how I'm seeing the chart most likely performing. Now, Am I guaranteeing that this is perfect? No, but my main goal is to give you a general idea of what the chart may end up doing based off the data we already have, based off what's more likely, and based off what on earth I think from a, a probability basis. So I see a little bit more upside. I do see a bit of a rejection coming. We could even stomp like at 700. It really depends on the data. But if things are bad and they do seem likely to be kind of bearish, we could drop a little harder up until like around August time. That's when we might get a nice balance of reversal and Tesla should start to push up with the stock split potentially coming around that time. I don't know the exact date, but I do think it's going to be exciting because the thing to watch for during the stock split is the options chain because calls, buying calls are going to be cheaper, right? The When when the stock splits, it's proportionately going to be cheaper. The price of options will go down too, which means that a lot more people are going to be loading up on those calls. A lot more people are going to be playing. And we know the potential that calls have in this play. Options could lead to very, very bullish price action. It's huge for the markets and they do play a big role but with that out of the way i want to thank you all for listening i hope i gave you guys a general idea or understanding of what may end up playing out i'm not promising this it's just very possible based off market conditions based off things we're seeing and i just wanted to put this out there for you just to prepare you in advance or at least give you an idea based off what data suggests with that out of the way Thank you for listening. Please enjoy your weekend, and I will definitely see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon, and peace out.